chapter two is a is a is a quick and and easy one. Um, I talk about some more symbols, uh, definitions, uh, present a few simple formulas, and then we cover tables and figures. So, beginning our uh, discussion of some symbols. Uh, capital N conveys the number of cases in the study sample. S small f conveys frequency, uh, the number of cases with a particular value. Suppose that there are 50 people in your sample and that 35 are women. Then n equals 50, that, that is, 50 is the sample size, and f equals 35, which is to say that the frequency of women is 35. Uh, and in this example, the frequency of men would be 15. 35 women and 15 men combined for our sample size of 50. N is an alternative symbol to F and uh, the small n is often used to convey the number of cases in a group. Uh, in our example, uh, N capital equals 50 and small n, a synonym for frequency, equals 35. Continuing on with the definitions, uh, distribution is a group of values that have been organized. Uh, frequency distribution is a particular type of distribution. Frequency distributions group together cases with the same values. Here's a, a formula for percentage. One takes a frequency, divides by the sample size, and then multiplies by 100. Below is an example of a frequency distribution table. Now, why do we say this is a distribution? Well, we've organized the values together here. Uh, the female values are uh, presented in the top row, male values in, in the bottom row. So we're, we're organizing our values and thereby making it uh, a distribution. So in this table, uh, sample size is 20. We have 11 women. We have 9 men. Here are the percentages. So, uh, for instance, dividing 11 by 20 yields 0.55, we multiply by 100, and the percentage of women in our sample of 20 is 55%. This slide presents uh, two more uh, definitions. Cumulative frequency of a value refers to the number of cases with that value or a lower value. Uh, cumulative percentage conveys the percentage of cases with a particular value or lower value. And here is a formula for cumulative percentage, making use of cumulative frequency and the sample size. Uh, this particular uh, frequency distribution table presents a hypothetical data pertaining to the age of sexual abuse perpetrators. Uh, sample size here is 20. So th this column is uh, listing frequencies. Uh, this column, the third column or middle column in the table is listing percentages. As a for instance, there are let's three perpetrators aged 55. So we take 3, we divide by 20, and that is yielding the 15% after we multiply by 100. Where are the figures in the cumulative frequency 
column coming from? Well, they are summing uh, those in the frequency column. So note, for instance, that the cumulative frequency for age 17, that is to say, the frequency of a perpetrator's age 17 or younger is 5, and that number comes from summing 2 plus 1 plus 2. Those are the frequencies that are lower to or equal to 17, and that yields the cumulative frequency of 5. Um, you know, here's our final case, the 20th case in the data set. The cumulative frequency for the uh, final case is 20, and uh, you know, that equals the sample size, and the sum of the frequencies also is 20. Now note that the age uh, is actually an interval ratio level variable. It's, uh, it's, it's numeric, and uh, it's usual for a frequency uh, distribution table where it can do so. In other words, where values can be ordered, uh, typically values are ordered from lowest to highest. So you can see that the perpetrator's ages are ordered from uh, youngest age to oldest age. Let's look at the cumulative percentages. Uh, now, these are basically uh, derived by dividing the cumulative frequency uh, by the sample size. As a for instance, the cumulative frequency for age 23 or younger is 8, uh, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, sum to 8. 8 divided by the sample size, 8 divided by 20 is 0 0.40. We multiply times 100 and there is our cumulative percentage of 40. Uh, and as I, I will note that um, some frequency distribution uh, tables uh, present all four pieces of information conveyed here. That is to say frequency, uh, percentage, uh, cumulative frequency, and cumulative percentage. Uh, other frequency tables present only some of these pieces of information. So th this uh, slide here is giving you a snapshot at some of the uh, calculations that we were uh, carrying out in our heads uh, on the prior slide. So we're going to consider age 23 here. Frequency is 1. What's the percentage uh, who are aged 23? That percentage computes by formula to, to 5%. Here is our cumulative frequency, which is derived by summing the frequencies and the final computation uh, uses the cum cumulative percentage uh, formula. So we take uh, the cumulative frequency of 8 and we divide by the sample size, multiply times 100, and we have a cumulative percentage of 40% who are 23 or younger. Uh, a group frequency distribution uh, groups cases together with, that have similar values. So it's different from a frequency distribution per se in that in a frequency distribution uh, the cases that go together have uh, the same values as, uh, rather than simply uh, similar values. This is a, a fuzzy uh, distinction. Uh, the table on this slide is a grouped frequency distribution table and it's a grouped table because you can see that we have combined uh, children of similar, not children, I mean to say we've combined perpetrators of similar ages uh, to form uh, categories or groups. And uh, then uh, the, following that grouping, uh, this table presents the same information as did uh, the prior one. So when you group cases together, you've got a grouped frequency distribution table. We have uh, finished talking about uh, tables uh, and uh, what distinguishes tables from figures is that tables do not include pictures or, or graphics. When you 
use pictures or graphics, then you have a figure. So what we want to do here now is look at some different types of figures. This slide is presenting for you a bar chart. Bar charts are used to display frequencies of categorical variables so that you can see that uh, the variable ethnicity comprises different categories. It's, it's non-numeric. Heights of the bar charts, charts columns uh, are conveying frequency. So count is a synonym here for frequency. As a for instance, we have, oh, I would say 750 or so non-black, non-Hispanic youth in this particular study sample. Now note that uh, this particular variable, uh, ethnicity, is a nominal level variable. Given that it's at the nominal level, uh, logically its values cannot be ordered. Therefore, uh, the order of presentation of the bars from left to right is uh, arbitrary. Bar charts are also used for categorical ordinal level variables. And when you have an ordinal level variable, values can be ordered. And in, in that instance, it's typical, uh, although it need not always be so, but it's typical that the, uh, the lowest value would be on the left, and then you would order on uh, towards the right with the uh, higher values. And, so, and I'm not talking about the, the frequency. It, it's a, in other words, um, strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree. The values of the categories um, determine the ordering of the, uh, of the bars, not the frequency of responses in a category. At least that is the typical practice. This slide is simply reviewing some of the material that I just covered, and I'll just let you um, take a look at it for several seconds to reinforce the points that were just made. Uh, histograms are much like uh, bar charts. They also use columns, uh, whereas the uh, bar chart is used with categorical variables. The histogram is used with numeric ones. And uh, similar to the bar chart, a bar's height, or column we can call it rather than bar, conveys frequency. In the uh, bar chart, it's characteristic that bars are separated physically in space. So, glancing back at this bar chart, the bars do not touch one another, nor do they come extremely close to doing so. On the other hand, in the histogram, uh, bars touch or nearly do so. And uh, the, the near touching of the bars is conveying uh, visually that adjacent bars have similar values. The ordering of the bars uh, in the histogram matches the order of the values that the bars convey. Here's a histogram. So the, the, the variable conveyed here is number of family members including cohabitators and that is a num numeric variable and that's why we're using a histogram rather than a bar chart. And you can observe that in this particular uh, histogram, the bars do indeed touch. Uh, let's see how many uh, families in this sample there were with six family members. We would simply trace over from the bar that conveys six members to the y-axis, and it looks to me like about 160 uh, persons in this sample uh, resided in families with six family members. Another figure 
that is used with numeric data is the frequency polygon. Frequency polygon conveys the very same information as does a histogram, and indeed uh, just as are histograms, frequency polygons are used with numeric data. So uh, this frequency polygon, or it's sometimes called a line chart, uh, is conveying the very same information as did the histogram. I don't know per se of a, a firm recommendation as to when one would use a histogram uh, in contrast to a, a polygon. I think the frequency polygon uh, is better when you have many categories. So if you were trying to convey 20 or more categories, say, uh, the frequency polygon would be a good choice. And perhaps when there are very few categories, say seven or eight or fewer, one would lean towards the histogram. But uh, this is mostly a matter of preference, and the computer programs can tailor these graphs uh, to meet your needs and desires. Well, the box plot is kind of a, a nifty figure. So let's go over what the different parts of this uh, box part are. Box plots have a, have a box, and uh, the top line in the box conveys the value at the 75th percentile. So the 75th percentile here conveys that uh, youth who drank on 10 of, say, 30 days uh, in the past month were at the 75th percentile. So 75% of youth drank 10 drinks or fewer. On the other hand, uh, this looks to me as though it traces over to 2. So 25% of youth drank 2 or fewer drinks in the past 30 days. The line in the center of, of the box uh, conveys the value at the 50th percentile. So half of the youth drank on four or more days and half on a, a lesser number of days. Box plots have whiskers and whiskers spread out. I'm just going to just say generally. Whiskers spread out to capture cases that aren't extreme outliers. So the whiskers are stretching out more in the positive direction than in the negative. So that means that the spread of the cases is, is spreading out more towards 30 days. And on the other hand, things are more compacted here. Uh, the whiskers terminate in what are called fences. Here's the lower fence. Here's the upper fence. Cases that are outside of the fences are commonly designated as outliers or sometimes as extremes. So that uh, in this case, this particular box plot is actually listing case numbers in, the, in this data set that pertain uh, to these particular values. So these youth were youth who were drinking uh, at very, very high uh, numbers of days uh, in the prior. 30. The box plot gives you a nice visual perspective on the data. So you can see the 50th percentile is quite low. On the other hand, there are some youth who drink uh, many, many days. And here's our final figure, the pie chart, which I'm sure that uh, most of you uh, encountered in, uh, in high school or perhaps even earlier. And the key idea is that the size of the slice is proportionate to the number of cases. So let's see. Eight to 14 days looks to me to be this slice of the pie right here. So this slice is um, taking up 24.6 percent of the of the area of the pie and uh, that 24.6 percent is indeed the uh, the percentage of cases that involve youth drinking from 8 to 14 days 
Now, I'm not sure on this, but just as a caveat, I do think that uh, this particular uh, data only includes youth who did drink. So I think that if the youth did not drink, they're not included in these pie charts. But I'm not sure on that. And that has taken us now through uh, uh, chapter two, through some, uh, some symbols, some formulas, tables, and, and finally figures.